Hey, how's it going for like? It's me, and you're back again for another instalment of the Pro Vlog. This time, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the RB26. I did a video quite a while ago now where I degreed the cams, Tomai Pond cams and engine, and I gave a kind of little description how to do that. I just want to explain a little bit why I'm doing it and show you the new setup that we're running here to try and do it a bit more accurate. Again, remember to hit that subscribe button. We appreciate all your subscribes. Hit that like button if you're liking what we're doing and check us out on the social media. We're on Instagram at Pro307 and Facebook as well. Check us out. I put a lot of little posts up there about the progress in between. Now, this engine runs to my pawn cams, which are a low lift cam. They're nothing fantastic. They've just got a 9.15. 9 point, yeah, 9.15 duration. They allow the valves just to lift a little bit different from standard, which allows the engine to be a bit more efficient, taking air in and exhaust gases out. Now, before we tune it in the dyno, I like to set a baseline reading for the center line of the cams, and we do this with a dial test indicator. And I have purchased this really big summit dial wheel uh, to help me from, just to help more accurate for tuning the cams into the car. So I just wanted to go, go and give you a, like a brief rundown of how I do this. It is a little bit complicated, it takes a little bit of maths. The frustrating thing about this job is getting the DTI set so that the cam lobe doesn't hit it, it sits on the valve bucket properly and it follows the travel of the valve bucket. Because you need to be able to go right down to uh, full lift the valve and right back up again and we're going to be checking the degrees on the degree wheel and setting the cams to Tomai's standard so this is a 260 cam uh, 260 inlet 260 outlet so it's a type B pond cams and they've got a 9.15 duration which is like a low lift cam they're, they're pretty soft cam to be honest. If you're going up to like pro cams you're going up to like a 10 mil lift, 10.1 mil lift and it just allowed more air to flow through the engine. Uh, these I suppose give you an all-round mid-range to slightly more power top end and we can adjust the cams with adjustable vernier cams to change the way the power band in the engine works but I'm just going to set them to the factory to my settings because uh, I feel that's what Tom I set them to. We might end up changing that in the dyno when it comes to that. So I'll show you how we do this. So what you haven't seen me do is set the, the needle at the top dead center on the degree wheel. How I've done this is I've put in basically a makeshift piston stop into cylinder one. It's a old spark plug that I've machined out and put a I think it's a 12 mil bolt drilled and tapped it in. Uh, set that at both rotations so the piston hits the stop then you turn it round full rotation until it hits the stop the other way. It allows you to set your top dead center on your dial wheel. Once you've done that we can take a piston stop out. We'll set the DTI up on the bucket of the camshaft and I've got the dial indicator set to basically half inch preload so the when the bucket's right up at its highest the dial indicator is pushed right down till you read on the small dial 0.5 and the big dial 0 and what I'm doing is I'm turning it until we get to 0.3 which will be our first reference point for Just 34. So we take 34, keep going past the bottom point of the valve lift to point 0.3 at the other side. Which is 
187. So do some quick math. 134 plus 187 equals, divided by 2 equals 110.5 degrees. So it's 110 degrees. I think that's as close as I'll probably get it. That's not bad going. Tomai's settings are 110 for intake, so we're going to leave that at that. That's going to be fine. Uh, now we need to set up and do the exhaust side. And if you find that when you degree the engine that the cams don't fully line up with what the uh, manufacturer instructions say you have to do is loosen the cap screws round about the vernier cam gears and you hold the camshaft with an adjustable spanner or with a spanner and then you can move the camshaft independent to the cam pulley and that allows you to degree in you just have to remember for every notch you move on the vernier pulley it's two degrees in the crankshaft so it makes it quite difficult if you're making fine adjustments now now i'm setting a baseline here but that's not saying that your tuner might decide to adjust that in the dyno to try and get different results from your engine if you want more mid-range power or if you want all the power to be up in the top end of the, the engine range it determines how your engine performs efficiency wise now all this now all this shows that the last time I set up the camshaft I set them up right to the same cylinder head, same bottom end, the same size of gasket there's no reason why they shouldn't line up again now that I'm checking it but I'm going to go and check the exhaust just to be safe now while I'm doing that let's go and have a look at some of the accessories that I'm going to be running on the engine this year uh, these are more nice to have, uh, a bit of bling just to make the engine a bit more professional. It's not something you absolutely necessarily need to have, but in this level of build I thought it was essential. A couple of new products I want to speak about, and also the new sump I'm going to be running, the big wing baffled sump. So let's get into that as well. A lot of these parts are not really needed, but I think they're essential when you're you're building a proper quality RB26 engine. So this is a Franklin Performance 10AN thermostat fitting. Now where this goes is into the lower thermostat housing in the block. You remove the water pump off the front of the engine and that allows you to get in with a punch and you can knock the old steel barb fitting out. Which my one was pretty corroded looking and horrible and this is just such a much neater set up so here it is it's a little AN10 fitting there's two o-ring seals and a lock nut which holds it into place so uh, it's a, in my opinion a lot better of a fitting to put in a lot tidier but it's gonna have to be put in properly or else I can't if you can't afford to have that leak when the, or come loose when the engine's in. They also recommend that you use a chisel and just put a notch in the end to stop the nut loosening off. I think I'm going to do that as well. A little thing, but I think an important thing to put into RB26 block. Quick, I would love to just hear from the judges of how difficult and what, what happened, what do you think? Also we've got, this is a UK product, this is Superforma, it is a billet aluminium 
block for the side for the standard RB26 has a water to oil cooler. I've had it removed for a lot of seasons now because I run two air to oil coolers. And it's just a more professional block takeoff for your oil system. It also comes with two uh, JIC. Is it JIC? No, NPT. Two NPT takeoffs for running sensors. So you could run a pressure sensor and I think you could run a temperature sensor as well. So that's uh, that's handy for running all your engine sensors and that. Or running additional engine sensors. It's basically just a bolt-on solution for the oil system on the side of the RB26. Comes with AN fittings with the ORFS O-rings. And it comes with all the bolts and that. So I think that's a cracking little kit. And we'll get that fitted as well. The rear radiator runs, I run Dash 20 cooling hoses, which are a little bit on the big side, but I always thought when running a cooling system, bigger is better when it comes to flow, especially with long distance. I'm flowing water from the pump at the back of the car to the front, and bigger bore size does help with water flow. So I've been running just like welded fittings, which are okay, but they are starting to come out better solutions for this. This is a 2.6 uh, engineering thermostat housing adapter for Dash 20. Let's have a look at that. Check that out. Comes in a little baggie and everything, look at that. 2.6 engineering, let's have a look at this. So that is the aluminium adapter. I like that it's it's got the grooves for the silicon sealant that seals it between the block machined into it. And threaded fitting, it comes with a Aeroflow positionable 45 degree dash 20 fitting, which is a good quality fitting. It screws in there. Good to me. I'll maybe lock tight that as well, just to save it coming loose. And I think that's going to work. I think that's going to work really well. I can't believe I'm wrapping up another exciting instalment of the ProVlog. Now, I know in the last couple of films I've basically just been talking, talking in RB. This one's no different. Uh, again, some of these upgrades you might find are a bit of a waste of money for you. You maybe find that you're better with a TIG welder and you've managed to just weld AN fittings onto your existing ports. Uh, you maybe changed inlet manifolds so you don't need that kind of part. I just thought I'd show you some of these products because uh, I've been doing a bit of research, came across them myself 
And uh, yeah, there's not a lot of information sometimes when it comes to these products, if they're actually any good, and I'd recommend them. Of course, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. These parts or products are all purchased with my own cold hard cash and installed here for your viewing pleasure. Uh, I would recommend all these parts are all quality parts. That's not saying I wouldn't accept some sponsorship or endorsement. If you know of anybody that's got any products for Drifting Sylvia's or RB26's that would like me to try their products, uh, it's a push, but we're always, we're always keen for pushing here. These parts are getting really expensive. And uh, as you, if you know me, you know it's, I'm all self-funded. So I think I'm going to wrap this up with the final bit that I haven't shown you is the big wing salt sump. Now I've just been running a sump with a side addition on it, which is not overly that big a sump. This is Garage 101 extended sump. They actually did the welding for me. I just uh, had to bolt the sump on. There is a baffled, the same as a Tomai baffled. Now uh, I know people maybe screw their nose up at the fact that it's a non-brand product, but it's a good copy of a Tomai uh, system. Of course, the best thing to do would be run a dry sump, but my budget could not stretch a dry sump, as I said in the last video. So I'm going to wrap up this video. I'm sure you've been watching, watching me yammer on for long enough. When we get to the next episode, we're going to be looking at the fabrication of the steering column support. Also, I'm going to be fitting or uh, repairing the tubs in the front of the car. You'll see that when I get to that. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button. If you like what you're seeing, hit that like button and check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.